They do have a place in the history books. I, I, I think it is pretty significant, actually. And we're going to replay the extended interview with Steve Kim a little later on the long lunch. But right now, Paul Upham joins us for a chat. Paul, you've tipped us the result yesterday. I, I wouldn't imagine you tipped round one, though. That was a shock. No, I said Danny Green would win this fight, but I didn't say it'd be first round knockout. But just to comment on something you said before, I think it's more memorable, this fight, because it was a, a two-minute fight. If it had been a boring 12-round fight and Green had a one, a two-minutes knockout of Roy Jones Jr. And let's not try and change the perspective now. Everybody had Roy Jones Jr. as the favourite, huge betting favourite. People putting money on to say Roy Jones was going to win by knockout. Let's not try and change that now. Let's give Danny Green all the credit he deserves for this wonderful performance. And I guess that's what makes the victory so much sweeter, knowing he was like the $3.70 outsider heading into the fight, and he was the underdog, and he came up trumps at the end. As I said yesterday, I felt that the Jeff Lacey fight was a mirage, that Roy Jones Jr. really wasn't in, in the same condition he was. He, he wasn't the Roy Jones Jr. of old. And it surprised me, even before the fight last night, talking to so many people who had Roy winning the fight. They just weren't following uh, the boxing scene. And it's amazing that uh, one Jeff Lacey win for Roy Jones Jr. Could, could make him look so good to so many people. What do you say to the people that suggest that Roy Jones just didn't try hard enough? Look, that's a joke. You know, Roy Jones is a very proud man, huge ego. Spent a lot of time with Roy in the last few weeks. Now, he wanted to win. He, he came here expecting he was going to win this fight rather easy. Maybe he did take Danny Green a little bit uh, for granted. Maybe he watched the Mundine fight with Green and didn't realise that Danny Green you know, starved himself to make that fight and had no right to be fighting at suit middleweight. We see a bigger, stronger and a more skilled Danny Green now. He's working really well with trainer Angelo Hyder and this is the best Danny Green we've ever seen. And for Roy Jones Jr, you mentioned before and we said earlier that he's going to lose a lot of money from this fight after the result last night, but where does that leave him? Well, I don't think Roy Jones should fight again. Uh, he's been knocked out badly three times now over the last few years. This was a, a really bad knockout. He lost $10 million last night. Bernard Hopkins is actually fighting on main event television right now. The Americans were so convinced that Danny Green was going to lose that Hopkins is fighting right now. Roy Jones was meant to win last night, and then they were going to fight on March 13 at the MGM Grand. They'd even set the location. That's how much they were convinced. So I'm not going to accept anybody saying that the, the fix was in this fight. It was a wonderful win for Danny Green. That's giving great uh, credit. And uh, uh, look, also credit for making the fight. It's, it's, it's not just easy to get a fight with Roy Jones Jr. And to bring into Australia, Roy Jones had never fought outside of America before. Let's give Danny credit as a fighter and a promoter and for what he's done. And this clip now of Roy Jones being knocked out is going around the world. Well, you said it lost a lot of money for Roy Jones. It's going to make Danny a lot of money if he wants to continue and head over to the States. Well, you heard Danny say before, he's not committing into anything it's, except spending time with his family, and he deserves that. Oh, I see four options for him. He could retire now. If Danny Green retired now, would, would anyone begrudge him that? Uh, and his reputation would be certainly secure. There's the rematch with Anthony Mundine. We'd love to see that in Perth next year. And you know Danny would love to avenge that, that career defeat. Does Anthony Mundine want the fight now? Does he want to move up to cruiserweight? That's the question mark. Thomas Adamak, the, the Polish fighter who beat Paul Briggs twice a couple of years ago, the Australian fans will know Thomas Adamak. He is the undisputed cruiserweight champion. That would be a great fight for Danny. He could establish himself as the undisputed cruiserweight world champion. And the other fight out, out there is Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins said, tell me two legends that Danny Green has beaten. Well, I'll give you one legend now, Roy, mm -hmm. Roy Jones Jr. Out of all the options you mentioned, what's the most likely then, do you think? I don't think the Hopkins fight is likely uh, uh, for as much as what Danny Green's achieved now. Hopkins to fight Danny Green, it's, it's a dangerous fight. In hindsight, it was actually safer for Roy Jones to fight Bernard Hopkins, who's more of a technician these days than a heavy puncher. I don't think Hopkins will want the fight because he beats Danny Green. He was going to say, well, what, that, what does that do for me? Um, I think actually Hopkins might look at Adamac. You know, to me, I, I still think that there's more money to be made and more interest. You can't tell me now that people aren't going to be interested in a Mundine Green rematch because people say now, well, you know, Anthony beat Danny the first time, but look what he did to Roy Jones Jr. I think there's a huge money, huge interest. I think it's the, the Ford-Holden rivalry all over again. And if you have that fight outdoors at Subiaco in Perth, I think it'll be one of the, the, the biggest night of, of boxing ever in Australian history. Well, Danny's spent all this time chasing Mundine. Do you think Danny might just use this to say, hey, I'm too good for you now, Mundine? You know, and that's his prerogative to do that. You know, he, doesn't, he doesn't need Anthony Mundine. He's, he's moved ahead with his own career and he's so successful and he showed that he can make the big fights. Um, the question is, does Anthony Mundine want the fight? Uh, now, Mundine's meant to fight Daniel Gill in a rematch by the end of February. I'm not sure that's going to happen. 
You know, does he want the opportunity? And people would say, well, why would Mundine fight Green? Well, why wouldn't you want to fight a guy you've already beaten with a chance to win a, a world title in your third weight class? So there's, there's history options there for Anthony Mundine. So as much as uh, Danny wants the, the rematch to avenge his career loss, Mundine gets the opportunity to move up to another weight class and become a three-division world champion. So there's a lot in there for both of them in, in his history, and then you throw a lot of money at them as well. And, you know, to have that super fight in Australia, does e either of them really want to go to America and risk going overseas for a big fight? Only Danny can answer that. Do you think also for, for Danny Green, he's got, to, you know, he's got to prove a lot of these critics wrong? And uh, he's, he does have a lot of critics. And by fighting Mundine again, becoming the best, you know, fans will regard him as the best boxer. I think some of the critics will be satisfied to the point where people had said that, you know, Danny had starved himself and drained himself. And you could see that the Danny Green in his fights is not the same Danny Green that fought Anthony Mundine. Now, let's not take any credit away from Mundine's performance. He fought a good fight that night. But I know for a fact that Danny Green wasn't the same Danny Green, just as the Roy Jones wasn't the Roy Jones of the past. Every fight is different. There's always, always conditions and variances in every fight. And that's what makes boxing so interesting, that as much as people thought Roy Jones was going to win easy last night, Danny Green just has had as much chance to win that fight as Roy Jones. Yeah, well, Paul, it was a fantastic fight. We will remember that for the rest of our lives, I'm sure. It's been great talking to you about it. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. All right, we'll stay with us on The Long Lunch because coming up shortly, the Davison brothers talk about V8s in Sydney. But up next, FIFA announces the seeds for the World Cup. And a tiger tries to hide his tricks. Hey, it's, uh, it's Tiger. I need you to do me a huge favour. Um, can you please take your name off your phone? My wife went through my phone.